Now, you know, not only what's happening right now, but how much division, how much destruction, how much exposure is happening right now. You know, there's more and more arrests of those involved in child smuggling and so forth, more arrests of uh, illegal activities and corruption and destruction. Many, many are being arrested today. And there is a plan to continue to expose and remove back all the hidden areas of evilness and wickedness so that the earth has one more opportunity. Everyone say one more opportunity. The whole world, the whole globe, has one more opportunity to be rescued into the kingdom of God. This is it. So that the world will have one more opportunity to be rescued into the kingdom of Christ Jesus. The word says that the path is narrow and difficult, and not many enter into it. The word also says that many will fall from the faith, taking heed to deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons. We're watching it. We are seeing the falling away of those who are called Christian. The problem is, is their character is not according to Christ. It's still according to the old man of self. See, only Christ's character can enter the kingdom of God. Does everybody understand that? There is no other way, no other path to enter. Now, God does have the last say. Amen? And we want a position so that he does have the last say. And that say is on your behalf, not against you, but with you. Amen? So there's that battle that you and I, not only were fighting for a position, but we fight for a position of victory so we can overcome all things. But if you're not in a position of victory, you can't overcome things. It's amazing on how much, and, and the word tells us that the beginning of sorrows will be associated with much hatred, violence. We have been in the beginning of sorrows, and we will be coming to the end of the beginning of sorrows. Again, I truly believe that we are in a time of seven-year prosperity. Seven years of plenty before seven years of famine. And it started in 2017. And that's when God put his servant in office. But many can't understand that yet. Because they're still being fed by Carnality, wickedness, and evilness. The continuous promotion of violence, lies, deceptions. I'm going to ask you a question. If Jesus showed up right now, right in front of your face, and he asked you, what have you done to let me in you to my kingdom? Or what haven't you done to enter my kingdom? See, we must put him before us now because the influence is so strong. It's very, very strong. What do we promote? What do we vote? What do we approve? And what do we disapprove? Listen, if there's anything that God would disapprove of, and you approve of it, that will reject you from his kingdom. There are many who are going to be very disappointed in that day who thought they were doing the right thing. Even Saul thought he was doing the right thing. And the Lord had to knock him off a horse. Judgment is here. There's no doubt that judgment is here. Wrath is not here. Judgment is here. God is judging this country. He is judging the world in righteousness and justice because that's the only thing that enters into the kingdom of God. Not abortion, not promoters of abortion, not promoters of same sex, none of those things. See, people believe that it is their right to choose. 
And there's an area to where it is your right to choose. You have a free will. But God allows us to choose those things and hope that we will choose the things that he chooses, not what the enemy or evil chooses. See, people are proclaiming and rights and freedoms and all kinds of other stuff. I used to do the same thing. Man, I want my freedom. What? To sin. That's what I wanted my freedom for, so I could drink, party, and have a good time. I wanted freedom from accountability and responsibility. See, when you came, became a Christian, you gave up every one of your rights. You have no rights. The only right you have is righteousness of Christ Jesus to promote what he promotes and to disapprove what he disapproves. <coughs> That's what we call fellowship. And without fellowship, you won't produce these areas of his character. In 2 Timothy chapter 2, Second Timothy chapter two. <clears throat> and many will fall away to doctrines of demons and false religions. Doctrines of demons are associated with lies. Socialism is a doctrine of demons. Communism is a not doctrines of demons. Leftism is a doctrine of demons. The only doctrine that's not of demons is the doctrine of Christ. Believe me, if people went to countries and saw what Sharia law did, they would realize it is a doctrine of demons. And that's the same thing as socialism. It is a doctrine of demons. They have no rights, but they are offered all kinds of promises. That's how Iran became bound again. A great free country. People from all over the world went to Iran. It was ruled by a king and a queen until a doctrine of demon entered who promised them free education, free health care, free this, free that. Removed the king and queen and it removed every one of their rights, their rights to firearms, the rights for women to drive a car, turn the whole thing into perversion, made it so nine-year-old children were considered an adult where they could marry them, sell them. Even Mohammed married a six-year-old. And what we're seeing right now is that same doctrine being promoted. And people are blinded to it and approve of it. And they will be rejected by Christ. It's amazing to me. That's why he says, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. You know, where you fellowship and where you get information is what you become. If you are fed by lies, you believe lies. That's where everything must be lined up according to the word of God. See, this is a prophetic move, what's happening right now. People don't even understand and see what's going on prophetically. Because of their associations, what they feed their spirit with, what they hear on the radio, what they see on the news, all of these other things. Remember, the ruler of this earth is Satan, and he controls all media. He controls all education. He controls the political, judicial. He controls the gold and the silver. He controls it all. And that's what his kingdom does. But what he feeds individuals is so that they serve him and not Christ. 
That's where doctrines of demons come into effect. Many will fall away. In 2 Timothy chapter 2, is everybody there? In verse 1. Oh, happy days. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse, You therefore, my sons and daughters, be what? Strong in the grace, which means strong in the plan of God. That means the plan to escape the deception of the enemy and the wrath of God. Grace does not say that you have a legal right to do whatever you want. That's not grace. That's a doctrine of demon grace. The grace of God says, I've come to bring you a plan to escape, not to do whatever you want. Satan's doctrine says, do what you feel like. You therefore, my sons and daughters, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus so you can escape. And the things that you have heard from me among many witnesses, commit these to who? Faithful men who will be able to teach others also. You therefore must endure. Everyone say, I must endure. Hardship is a good soldier of Jesus Christ. In other words, you will be persecuted. You will be lied you will be said that you are evil. But God knows, doesn't he? It says here, no one engaged in warfare entangles himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who enlisted him as a soldier. Are you a soldier? And also, if anyone competes in athletics, he is not crowned unless he competes according to the rules. The hard-working farmer must be first to partake of the crops. Consider what I say, and may the Lord give you understanding in all these things. Remember that Jesus Christ, the seed of David, was raised from the dead, according to my gospel, for which I suffer trouble as an evildoer. He suffers trouble as an evildoer. Why? Because he's a follow, follower of the doctrine of Christ. Is there any political agendas or parties or governments that are anti-Christ. Yes. Yes. Many. They boo God when they get together. And so-called Christians approve of it. Oh, hallelujah. Verse 8 again, remember that Jesus Christ of the seed of David was raised from the dead according to my gospel for which I suffered trouble as an evildoer, even to the point of chains, but the word of God is not chained. Therefore I endure all things for the sake of the elect that they also may obtain the salvation which is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. This is a faithful saying. If we died with him, we shall also live with him. If we endure we shall also reign with him. If we deny him, he will what? Deny us. Deny us. Let me ask you this. No, denying him is not saying, oh Lord, I reject you. What's it saying is, I'm not approving what you approve of. And I'm not disapproving what you disapprove of. You are denying him now. Verse 13. If we are faithless, he remains faithful. He cannot deny himself. Again, he says, be strong in the plan. That means that we become faithful. We are able to teach. We become teachers to declare the truth. We are witnesses. Amen? We are not stagnant. We are movers. Stagnation will bring destruction. Meaning doing, so when we're not stagnant, meaning that we're no longer doing it for self. Amen? We do it now for everything of the kingdom. We are busy in about kingdom business. <laughs> we're not busy in the wrong places. We are able to endure and deny ourselves. It is a reality of a process, what we call death to self. It is a process called death to self. Only this reality can position to, to victory. The key is recognizing and acknowledging the fruits and the attitude, motive, and desires of self. 
again, it's not until we acknowledge it and recognize it that there is a separation between a new and an old. When there is not a recognition and an and acknowledgement that there's not a separation, then the old is taken over. The new always acknowledges it. Remember, there's an old self and there's a new man. The old one and the new one. That's why you must be born again. That's why the word says that Jesus is not only Savior, but he is Lord. But many people have never reached Lord. They've only maintained the level of Savior. And if they don't reach Lordship, they lose Savior. Philippians 4. Remember, self is the offspring <clears throat> of Lucifer. It's born in the image of the devil. It's, it has a process of hatred, violence. It lies, cheats. It's arrogant. Loves lust of the flesh, lust of the eye, and pride of life. It fights for self, not for the kingdom. In Philippians 4, <clears throat> in verse 4, let's speak it. It says what? Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. And let your gentleness be known to all men. Gentleness. The Lord is what? At hand. You know, it was pretty amazing. I don't know if you saw where this, uh, I guess he was a college student or high school or whatever. And I guess they went somewhere. It was on the news. And... Uh, they went to go see an event, and because he had a Make America New or whatever it is, Make America Great hat on, they were persecuting him tremendously. And this kid did nothing. He just maintained. He didn't shoot back. He didn't say a word. And they persecuted him, cussed him, said all kinds of things, and he didn't do anything. He stood his ground. He just stayed there. Why? Because he maintained a place of gentleness. The anointing had to be on this kid. And all the media was persecuting him also. Of course, now he's involved. He was in the Catholic Church. I guess they went somewhere for an event or something to that degree. It was amazing to me that this kid didn't budge. Hallelujah. What endurance. He didn't budge. Of course, they have a lawsuit against all the media for, for uh, lying and stuff. How many people are spit on because they have a Make America Great hat on? Like they're evil or something. Not knowing that the ones that are spitting on them are evil. This is where we're at right now. Why? Because they're of self. They've not died to themselves. They're still the offspring of darkness and serving the powers of darkness. Does everybody understand that? That's why you and I must constantly come to the level of death to self. Death to self. Death to self. It says in verse 5, uh, verse 6, be what? Be what? Anxious for what? Nothing. Nothing. But in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Okay. Without possessing patience, amen, <laughs> you'll always be anxious. You'll always be anxious. You can't see your shortcomings because the mind becomes a pinball machine. Boom, 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 boom. It's scattered in every direction, and it's off course to the plan of grace. It constantly maintains the activation of the carnal mind, the mind of self. Loosing <laughs> the promotion of self. Amen? Amen. And losing the death of self. It's jumping to every conclusion directed by self. 
We must reach the level of faith that is in you to continue in the cooperation with the words of the Spirit that says all things can work to the good to those who love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. But see, if you love him, it says you will obey him. If you love him, you'll approve what he approves of. If you love him, you'll disapprove of what he disapproves of. Amen? In Philippians 1. Death to self. Philippians 1. In verse 19, Philippians 1, verse 19. For I know that this will turn out for my deliverance through your prayer and the supply of the Spirit of Jesus Christ, according to my earnest expectation and hope that in nothing I shall be ashamed, but with all boldness, as always, so now also Christ will be magnified in my body, whether for life or by death. For to me to live is Christ, and to die is gain. Wow. To me to live is Christ, and to die is gain. In other words, to live is Christ, and to die to, to, die to yourself is gain. That's why we must, we're battling. We're always reaching that place where we're dying to self. De self must become dead to you. It is a process. Listen, we are going through stuff. You will always go through stuff. Hello, welcome to the earth. The word tells us the enemy is going to shoot at us, you know, with a bow. The, the dart of deception. To live is, to, is Christ. To die is to gain. That's the difference between reacting and responding. Reacting means reacting to the old man. Outbursts of wrath, selfish ambitions, all of these other things. Cursing, cussing, coarse jesting, all of these areas of the old man. Possessing patience is to hold on to the New man. Amen? Because you're not anxious. And Romans 6. Death to self. Oh, happy days. The word says that the Lord enjoys and is pleased in the death of his saints <laughs> in the area of death to self. Romans 6, verse 5. Let's read it together. Is everybody there? For if we have been united together in the likeness of his death, certainly we'll also be in the likeness of his resurrection. So do you understand this? This is a key thing. Dying to yourself will bring you to the place of resurrection. Without dying to yourself, you miss it. That's where people just think, well, I'm a Christian. I can just do whatever, approve whatever, do whatever, go places to drink, do, what, do this. The word says, touch nothing unclean. Then I'll be a father to you. Verse 6, knowing this, that our old man, everyone say old man, old the self, was crucified with him, that the body of sin might be done away with, that we should no longer be slaves of sin. For he who has died has been freed from sin. He who has died has been freed from sin. He who has died to yourself has been freed from the control of the presence of evil. That's why you and I see things different than the rest of the world. That's why we hear things. That's why we can discern and interpret things. That's why we can discern a lie. I'm telling you, as soon as Obama was elected, I knew that man was a liar from the beginning. 
because of the spirit of truth. I knew that that man was not right from the beginning. Oh, he had all kinds of promises. He had all kinds of celebrities. He had all the media on his side. All the, but I knew he was a liar. He was an antichrist individual. And he mocked the gospel. And he mocked Christians. But people didn't see it. They just kept avoiding it and pushing off to the side. You know what they were looking for? A handout. But that's what the devil loves to bring. He likes to bring a false doctrine of a handout. This is how people are going to receive the mark of the beast. It will be a handout. Oh, hallelujah. For if, oh, <laughs> for he who has died to himself has been freed from the presence of sin and the influence of its voices. Now, if we died with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him, knowing that Christ having been raised from the dead, dies no more. Death no longer has dominion over him. For the death that he died, he died for sin once for all. But the life that he lives, the life that he lives, he lives to God. This is where you got to look at. Am I living for God or am I living for myself? Likewise, you also reckon. That means acknowledge yourselves to be what? Dead Indeed, to sin. If, if you're not dead to yourself, can you be dead to sin? No. no. But alive to Christ in Christ Jesus our Lord. Therefore, do not let sin reign in your mortal body that you should obey it in its lust. In other words, don't let sin, the voice of the stranger, continue to reign in your mind. And do not present your members as in instruments of unrighteousness to sin, but present your member, your, yourselves to God as being alive from the dead and your members as instruments of righteousness to God. For sin shall not have dominion over you, for you are not under the law, but under what? Grace, which is a plan. So if you're cooperating with the plan, you're going to overcome, aren't you? Oh, reckon and acknowledge, accept, believe, and execute. If we died with him, we'll live with him. Not allowing sin to reign in our thoughts. All sin has a desire to move us out of the position of victory. All sin has a desire to move us out of the position of victory by allowing self to reign instead of Christ. I'll say that again. All sin is a desire to move us out of the position of victory, which is overcoming, by allowing self to reign instead of Christ. 2 Corinthians 5. A reminder today, because it's get escalating more and more. Second Corinthians chapter 5, verse 16. That's why you must be careful of associations. Bad company corrupts good habits. There's always limitations and boundaries set by the Spirit. We must recognize them. In verse 16, let's speak it. Therefore, from now on, we regard no one according to the flesh, or who lives according to self. Even though we have known Christ according to the flesh, yet now we know him thus no longer. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a what? He's a new creation. All things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Now wait a minute. Anyone who's living in Christ, self can't live in Christ. It's impossible. Does everybody get it? Self can't live in Christ. Okay, keep your finger here and go to Romans 8. Because we're coming back to that. Self cannot live in Christ. That means you're no longer a new creation. You're still the old man, not a new man. 
In verse 1, Romans 8, verse 1. There is now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. Hello. So even though you say you're in Christ, you're a new creation, you're a cr new creation, but if you're still walking according to the flesh, you'll have condemnation. Only those who walk according to the Spirit, who are led by the Spirit, have access to the things of God and are walking in the plan of grace. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do, that it was weak through the flesh, God did by sending his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh. On account of the sin, he condemned the sin in his flesh. That the what? Everyone say righteous requirement. Righteous requirement. So there is a requirement for me and you. That means there must be a cooperation then. The righteous requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us who do not walk according to the flesh, which is self, the old man, but according to the spirit. For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh, but those who live according to the spirit of the flesh uh, uh, set their minds on the things of the Spirit. For to be carnally minded or fleshly minded is what? Death. Death. But to be spiritually minded is what? Life and peace. So we must come to the arena and level of death to self. Or there is no entrance and there is no freedom. Is everybody okay? All right, let's go to 2 Corinthians 5. Therefore, in verse 17, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he's a new creation. Well, if he's led by the Spirit, he's in Christ. If he's led by the flesh, he's not in Christ. It's that simple. No matter whether he says he's a Christian or not. If you're led by the Spirit, you're in Christ. If you're not, you're deceived. And you're under the rule of darkness, not under the rule of light. Verse 18. Now all things are of God who has reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ and has given us in a ministry of reconciliation that is God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself not imputing their trespasses to them and has committed to us the word of reconciliation. Now then we are ambassadors for Christ as though God were pleading through us. We implore you on Christ's behalf be reconciled to God, for he made him who knew no sin to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. Wow. So we regard no one according to the character of self, the old man, flesh. We recognize it and acknowledge it, that the new man, the new creation, is submitted to the spirit of Christ. Self is an enemy of God. Everyone say self, self. is an enemy of God. Your new creation is still carrying a voice of influence, but it has no power. Why? Because you still have the old man in you. He's called flesh now. He may have a voice of influence, but he's got no power. So he tries to influence you to connect you to the power of darkness called sin. Does everybody get that? And that's where music, media, books, education, all of these things are always trying to promote self and not Christ. If they're not promoting Christ, what are they promoting? Self. And if they're promoting self, what are they promoting? Antichrist and doctrines of demons. Oh, Ephesians 4. Ephesians chapter 4. But I'm a good person. Don't mean stink. It's a tree of knowledge of good and evil. But I have good intentions. Don't mean stink. Only those who practice righteousness and justice, amen, are being led by the Spirit of Christ. 
those who promote righteousness and justice. Not violence, not bloodshed, not perversion. This is where judgment is at. Ephesians 4.20. He said, but you've not learned Christ. You've not learned his character. Why? If you had, you'd heard him and have been taught by him as the truth is in Jesus. That you do what? That you what? Put off. Put off. So he said, you've not learned the character of Christ. Why? Because you have not allowed death to come to self. And verse 22 says, why? Because you haven't put off concerning your former conduct the old man. His attitude, motive, and desires, which grows corrupt according to the deceitful lust, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind, and that you put on the what? The new man which was created according to God in true righteousness and holiness. Okay, there's the two fruits. Is the righteousness and holiness being produced? If it's not, then you're not in Christ. And you have not died to self yet. And you will be judged according to the world, not according to the ways of Christ. Somebody get this. Verse 25, therefore putting away what? Lying, lying, lying. Man, there's so many lies going on, it's incredible. I mean, there's lies in media, lies in government, lies in political lies and the judges. I mean, there's lies all over the stinking place. It's incredible. There are what we call fake flags. Anybody heard the word fake flag? A fake flag is an event that's produced to distract. You got to remember, this is how the rule of the world operates. In the economy system, he creates chaos then he finances the recovery. That's how he operates. He creates false flags. If he's beginning to be exposed more in one area, he'll cause a false flag in another area. Yesterday, the shootings, two of them were false flags. They're real, but these were time-triggered individuals that were sent out to do these things to distract from something else that's being exposed. See, they do this all the time. You got to remember the ruler of this world is who? Amen. Satan. Amen. So he creates false flags where people get harmed. Listen, that, when the shootings in the massacre of Las Vegas, that was a false flag to distract of something. These people are triggered to go out and do these things. You don't think that they would know where this guy was bringing all this weaponry in this room? You don't think that they knew that? And the police had nothing to say. They had no evidence, no nothing. Come on. This was all a false flag. So what they do is they create things to distract or they create things to finance. This is how the world operates. It's, that's why they call it deep state because it's controlled by Satan's kingdom. Is everybody okay? Wild stuff. Glory. All right. He says, therefore putting away what? Lying, let each of you speak truth with his neighbor, for we are members of one another. Be angry, but don't what? So there's nothing wrong with righteous anger. Does everybody get that? Man, there's sometimes I have to be angry to get through. Sometimes I have to become angry to get through and battle self. Sometimes I have to get angry but it's not an anger of, of a hatred. It's an anger to bust through. When I'm on a job sometime and I find myself slacking or not being able to see things through, I'll get angry to bust through. So get out of my stinking way. <laughs> <laughs> but it's not offense, it's not anything. Why? Because I'm battling through me to get something done. Boy, did it get hot in here. <laughs> Snap. <laughs> well, 
glory to God. Verse 26 again. <laughs> Daddy knows. Be angry and don't sin. Do not let the sun go down on your wrath, nor give place to the what? The devil. devil. Let him who stole steal no longer, but rather let him labor working with his hands what is good, that he may have something to give him who has need. Let no corrupt word proceed out of your mouth, but what is good for necessary edification, that it may impart grace to the hearers. And don't grieve the Holy Spirit and the things you approve of or disapprove of. by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Let all bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. And be kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God in Christ forgave you. Wow. <laughs> Not submitted to the Spirit of Christ, <laughs> become angry without sin. Again, there is righteous anger, sometimes breaks through down and through the uh, possession of self into the new man. What it does is it brings you under control of self then. Yeah. Romans 16. For I hurt somebody. <laughs> Glory. <laughs> Romans 16. Did you ever get frustrated with yourself? Yeah. Don't lie. Everybody has. <laughs> it's like, gosh, how stupid can I be and still breathe? <laughs> I can't believe I did that again. You know, we're rough on ourselves, you know. But if you're truly, a, you know, wanna, you want to please God, you're rough on yourself. Amen? That's why we're rough on ourselves. Not to become perfect for self, but become perfect for him. <laughs> Romans 16, 17. Now I urge you, brother, note those who cause divisions. Slap them in the head and get them out of the way. No. <laughs> now I urge you, for, <laughs> brother, note those who cause divisions and offenses. Contrary to the doctrine which you learn and avoid them. Listen, everybody's going to be offended and everybody is going to be in distress at some time. It doesn't become sin until you do what you do with it. Now, you can hold that bitterness. You can hold that offense. You can allow that stress and distressing power overtake you where you become, allow the old man to run it, run your life. Many people give up and go back to the world because they say it's too hard and the problem is they're bringing all this stuff on themselves anyways. Amen? It says that we, we, we were afflicted when we want, went astray. Amen? So in this, everybody's going to go through something it's a, and, and you're going to be offended, you're going to be disappointed, you're going to be discouraged. Those things are going to come. But what are you going to do with it? Are you going to React to it according to the old man, or are you going to respond to it according to Christ? This is the whole key. This is everything. So it says that you'll know them by their fruits. So turn on the TV one day, watch all the news, and see how much fruit there is. Stinking disgusting. It's nothing but fruit of evil. Evil. Speaking, about, speaking against, not even realizing, it's not about even the person. How about the most powerful office in the world is the president of this country? I mean, there's still respect to the office. I might not have liked Obama because I knew what he was. I didn't like his agendas. I knew everything was lies. I knew he was here trying to bring down the country, and I know he's not a U.S. citizen. Anyone who doesn't understand that is pretty stupid. He's already uh, confessed multiple times that he was born in Kenya and not from Hawaii. <laughs> but he was groomed for this position to bring down this country. Why? To promote one world order under the satanic rule. 
Why? Because there's only two major countries that stand against Satan's kingdom, Israel and the United States. Why do you think that they're so against them too? And look, you got politicians right now that are coming against Israel. God's hand, God's country. That's why he brought up the United States. Why do you think Israel and the United States are so tight? Because they're the only two that are combating antichrist organizations, pedophile, child smuggling, child sacrifice, murder. They're coming against them. And other countries are beginning to join them now because they're realizing and recognizing the evil and wickedness of what's been going on. Because it's been so hidden for so many years, and now it's come to the surface. Why? Because God is bringing judgment. Not wrath, judgment. Amen? Because wrath will come, but right now it's judgment. Oh, happy days. Okay, now, verse 17. Or, uh, yeah, let's start at 17 again. Now, I urge you, brethren, note those who cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine which you learned and avoid them. For those who are such do not serve our Lord Jesus Christ, but their own belly, their own self. And by smooth words and flattering speech, deceive the hearts of the simple. For your obedience has become known to all. Therefore, I'm glad on your behalf. But I want you to be wise in what is good and simple concerning evil. And the God of all peace will crush Satan under his feet shortly. And the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Again, you will have offenses and distresses. It's, it's what you do with them. Amen? Psalm 43. Psalm 43. Death to self. What a process. What a challenge. Start in your verse, first four verses, one through four. Psalm 43. Let's speak it together. We're going to decree this. Vindicate me, O God, and plead my cause against the ungodly nation. O deliver me from the deceitful and unjust man, for you are the God of my strength. Why do you cast me off? Why do I go mourning because of the oppression of the enemy? O send out your light and your truth. Let them lead me. Let them bring me to your holy hill and to your tabernacle. Then I will go to the altar of God and to God my exceeding joy, and on the harp I will praise you, O God, my God. Oppression of the enemy comes in many ways. Again, to bring discouragement and disappointment and oppression and so forth. And, you know, but he requested, he knew he was battling through this. He knew his old man was being reactivated. And he requested, he said, listen, please send me your light and truth. Send me your light and truth. Why? So that they can guide me to the assembly and aid me in the assistance of the assembly of the saints. Amen? So I can assist in the death of self. See, when we come and worship together, we come to a level of death to self. The whole thing is maintaining it when you leave. Amen? Because the enemy is going to throw fiery darts at you and everything else. The world's going to speak to you and try and reactivate the old man again. And it's a constant fight. And, you know, again, he gave us the formula, deny yourself, right? Pick up the cross. Well, that means pick up the sword and fight. So you can what? Follow. Because without a fight, you can't follow. You'll always be misled. Do you have to fight for the presence of God? Do you have to fight for the truth? You have to fight in everything you do. Why? Because you're always living a life of denying self. You're always living a life to death to self. You're always constantly going to another level of death. Every level of death you reach, God can trust you more. Every level of death that you lose, God begins to pull his trust. 2 Timothy 2, 21. Endurance is needed. Endurance. 
You know, the enemy always makes you believe that it was, uh, it's better on the other side. <laughs> it's better somewhere else. It's better here. It's better there. It's better there. It, that's all he's trying to do is get us out of position of victory. Amen. In verse 21. Second Timothy chapter 2, verse 21. What does it say? If, therefore, if anyone does what? Cleanses himself from the latter. Man, we've heard this multiple times. In other words, that's that area where we're constantly cutting loose of everything that's entangled of our past. You know what? Even from before you got here today. Therefore, if anyone cleanses himself, cleanses, repents, washes himself with the blood from anything he's associated with from his past, he'll be a vessel for honor sanctified and useful for the master, prepared for every good work. That's simple enough. So the requirement is cleanse, amen? That means that we've got to come to a place of cutting ourselves loose from the self-imposed attitude, motive, desires, and influence of our past. Works and acts of the flesh. Therefore, if anyone cleanses himself from the latter, he'll be a vessel for honor, sanctified, useful for the master, and prepared for every good work. Flee also youthful lust, but pursue righteousness. Pursue what? Righteousness. Not self-righteousness, righteousness. Pursue faith, love, peace with those who call on the Lord out of a what? Pure house. So be careful who you associate with. But avoid foolish and ignorant disputes, knowing that they generate strife. And a servant of the Lord must not quarrel, but be gentle to all, able to teach, patient, and humility, correcting those who are in opposition. If God perhaps will grant them repentance, so that they may know the truth and that they may come to their senses to escape the snare of the devil, having been taken captive by him to do his will. So those who are of the flesh are doing the will of Satan. Does everybody understand that? There's only two wills, the will of Christ or the will of Satan. Now, there's multiple levels of each will, but you're either serving self or you're serving God, one or the other. That's it. If you're serving a false doctrine or a doctrine of demon, you're serving Satan's kingdom. You're either serving one or the other, and there's no offense. Remember, the devil owns offense. Luke 9. Luke chapter 9, verse 23. We are being challenged. We are being high, hard pressed. We are being persecuted. The largest persecution in history is right now of Christians globally. All over the world. But the media won't tell you that. You have to search that out. The media wants you to think everything's hunky and dory and we have an evil president. Because the media is anti Christ. Luke 9 23. Then he said to them, All, everyone say, All. all. If anyone desires to come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. So there is the formula, right? It is called the spirit of law, the law of the spirit. But if you really are, want to know him and be connected to him, and you really want to follow him, then you must deny yourself. We must become dead to self. Dead to those thoughts. Dead. And we must come to a place where we totally trust no matter what's going on, we know that it's going to work to the good. It's all going to work to the good, no matter what you're going through. It's, but if you're connected, but if you're out of position, it's not going to work to the good. For whoever desires to save his life will lose it. That's the difference between surrender and survival. Those who want to save the life fall into survival mode. Those who've exchanged their life come to surrender mode. But whoever loses his life for my sake will what? Save it. For what profit is a man if he gains the whole world and he himself is destroyed or lost? 
You know, you got to ask yourself, what am I actually doing for the kingdom of Christ? What am I doing for the kingdom of Christ? You know, do you volunteer? Do you participate? What are you doing for the kingdom of Christ? For the kingdom of God. What are you actually doing for the kingdom of God? See, many people just feed off of, for handouts from God. And yet they're not servants to him. That's where Jesus is just Savior, not Lord. When he's Lord, you serve. When he's Savior, you take. Because you took salvation. And then you become a taker of everything else. There's a difference. Are you really serving the kingdom? What are you doing besides coming to church? These are all things that will be required of me and you when we stand before him. Do you warfare for him every morning? Do you seek him? Do you decree promises? Do you serve him? Are you available for him when he asks you to do something? Or are you too busy, caught up in your own life? Are you spending more time in worldliness instead of kingdom business? These are all things that are required of me and you. And if we don't ask these things to ourselves now, it's going to be pretty shameful when we get before him. Is everybody okay? Whoever is ashamed of me and my words... Of him, the Son of Man will be ashamed when he comes in his, home, in his own glory and in his Father's house and of the holy angels. But I tell you truly that there are some standing here who shall not taste death till they see the kingdom of God. <clears throat> he said this to all humanity. If you want salvation and a position of victory, you must deny yourself. You must come to the death of of self so you can battle and follow and I'm going to close at Colossians 3 why what are we fighting for see so many people fight for their lives instead of fighting for the life of Christ Colossians 3 Verse 1. <clears throat> Let's speak this. We're going to sow this. If then you were raised with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ is sitting at the right hand of God. Set your mind on the things above, not on the things of the earth. Now, it doesn't mean that you're going to walk around with your head up like this. <clears throat> you're setting your mind on the things above. In other words, how God thinks. The things that, that he approves of, the things that he disapproves of. Decisions. I acknowledge in him in all your ways. Gosh, Lord, you think I should buy this car? Think I should buy this house? You think I should do this? You, where would you like me to put money? Where would you like me to sow time? What would you, in other words, you're acknowledging him. Why? Because you're thinking about kingdom, not yourself. That tells you whether you're in the flesh or in the spirit. Verse 3. For you died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is our life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. Therefore, put to death your members which are on the earth, fornication, uncleanness, possession, passion, evil desire, and covetousness, which is idolatry. Because of these things, the wrath of God is coming upon the sons of disobedience, in which you yourselves once walked when you lived in them. Hopefully you don't go back. But now you yourselves are to put off all these anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy language out of your mouth. Do not lie to one another since you have put off the old man with his deeds and have put on the new man who is renewed in the knowledge according to the image of him who created him. Where there is neither Greek nor Jew nor circumcised nor un <clears throat> uncircumcised, barbarian, 
Scythian slave nor free, but Christ is all and in all. Therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, put on tender mercies, kindness, humility, meekness, long-suffering. There you are, those are the fruits of the Spirit. Amen? Bearing with one another and forgiving one another. If anyone has a complaint against another, even as Christ forgave you, you also must do. But above all these things, put on love, which is the bond of perfection, and let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to which also you were called in one body to be thankful. Let the word of God, word of Christ, dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another, in songs and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. And whatever you do in word or in deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to the Father through him. For it is written, for it is spoken, and so shall it be. Amen. Reaching the level of death to self. Welcome to the house of death. Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. Protect us today in the seed that's been imparted that we may come to recognizing acknowledging the fruits of self and the fruits of the spirit, the fruits of the flesh, that we will no longer cooperate nor react according to the old, but cooperate with the spirit of the living Christ, that we may know you, behold your glory, and bring glory to your name. In Jesus' name. Nobody said amen. amen.